Hello, everybody. This is Sharon, AK Harris, back with a new product from Ranger and uh, Tim Holtz, and it's the new line of boundary wax, and it is awesome. I, I mean, it is really truly magnificent um, product. I, I mean, this is a Tim Holtz product under his distress line. And I'm going to be using today Statue, Sterling, Gilded, and Mind. Um, Tim has a wonderful demonstration about how all the different ways to use it, but I'm going to use it a little differently. So today I'm going to um, make, first I'm going to do an abstract. And what I want to do is put down some color. So I'm going to use some uh, amethyst. And just scribbling trying to get my idea what I'm thinking and I'm thinking I want you to look up here and I want a little something here for balance so I'm just gonna put that there so basically I'm just thinking I, I'm not really planning I'm, I'm more enjoying the process so consider that when you're doing some of these and I'm looking for some dark amongst all this light and maybe a circle and I might, all this is going to evolve, and I don't know how it will evolve. That's the fun of doing an abstract. But I'm going to do an abstract, and then I'm going to show you how I do a uh, more of a detailed painting. I'm going to put a little green in here. All right. I noticed that I'm doing a lot of vertical lines, then I, I try to put a horizontal in there just to break it up. Now I'm going to take a little um, alcohol. And give it a spritz and now I want to move it so I'm gonna pull it up and down and let it do its deal so I'm looking to uh, work with the universe I don't know what I'm gonna get I just know it's gonna be pretty cool so I'm, I'm getting my alcohol ink going and this is also Tim Holtz alcohol ink with from Ranger and I'm gonna throw some alcohol on there some drops of it and I'm just going at it and just having fun. So, but th there's still rules. So what I want to do is maybe thin this out a little bit here, give it a little, you know, little break up the heaviness of the color. Don't be afraid to put some paint down because that's the only way you're going to lift off. And do you see how I get a nice lighter value? It's very, very beautiful. And I'm liking that. And I think I might like to bring it right off the paper here. And I'm just using alcohol. And then I'm going to wipe out my brush. And I use my dirty napkins all the time. They really work good and they last a long time. You can always activate some of the edges if you like some texture. And so you can do that. You can add some drops. What I also like to do is when I'm seeing this, I see, I try to break up things. I don't want it to be always the same. It's got to be broken up. So if I notice something's same, same. Just break it. Do something to it to make it a little different. And now I don't have that line. I can even blot and I get these nice textures because I find texture is really desirable. And then blot and you get even more textures. So I, I'm liking this and I want to carry on. So I'm going to clean out my brush. Okay. I don't mind that light area. I can always take that dirty brush and just give it, get a little more alcohol and just kind of tint the surface, just a little, not a lot. I like the light to show up as well, so I don't want to lose all that white. I just want to tint it. Now I'm using a uh, Yupo paper. And um, when you're using the waxes, you have to heat it. Now with Yupo, it's plastic, so you gotta be careful, You, but you can definitely do it with Yupo. I had no problem. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just breaking up all that light Maybe break up that line a little bit. Do you see how more interesting that is? Just doing that. Just breaking things up. Very beautiful. So I don't know if this is even going to show up when I'm done because I just kind of carry on. So what I want to do this time is um, let's use some foundry. And that's a, uh, this. it's almost like a copper color. And since we get so much blue and green, it's the complement. 
Now, when you're using the wax, you want to really shake it and get all those wonderful molecules mixed up. And I'm going to just put a little dab of it right here on the side of my paper. Now, it sets up pretty quick, so you want to kind of work quickly, but you can also reconstitute it with alcohol. It is not alcohol ink. i got to express that. It is not alcohol ink. It's a whole different animal. Go to Tim's uh, YouTube and look up Distressed Wax and learn all about it because he really has a wonderful display of it. You can even use it right on the, the surface if you wanted to. Just put a little dab out. Now, it'll actually stay thick. Um, let me see if you can see that. It's hard to see sometimes, but it, it's dimensional. So if you leave it like that, it'll stay big, but when we heat it, it'll melt down, but it will still stay a little bit more texturized. I'm just gonna kind of take that dirty brush and dance it around. I might even just go into it. You see how those grooves you get? It's kind of cool, isn't it? And I'm gonna follow this line that's kind of going horizontal to just keep it a little bit more interesting. Break up some of this anywhere I see it not broken up. Now when this dries and uh, I cure it with the heat gun, and I'm gonna be using a Ranger heat gun, um, you're gonna notice that it, it the shine will come out. So let's just do that at this point, just so you see. Get my heat gun. and see if you can see the change. And it doesn't take long, and like I said, I'm working on UFO, so you don't wanna get it real close. You wanna get it further back, and it'll definitely cure. And you see it go there? It's starting to go. And I'm just gonna dance it around. See that? Let's get that these areas up here. See all these areas, they just start to shine, and I'll show it to you a little bit more in a second. All right, that looks good. So you can see already we're getting this beautiful shine of metal. But what's magical about this is that I can work on top of it again. So let me add some um, sterling this time. And again, you gotta shake it. Now when you shake it, some bottles will rattle a lot and some won't because of the metal that's in it is got different consistency. So it is still mixing, just shake the heck out of it. And I want to make a nice big heavy line, and I'm putting a pretty decent blob there. Get my brush and just bringing that down and bringing that down, and maybe bring it across here. Maybe bring it across, and you can already see the silver popping out on it. Looks really beautiful, doesn't it? And I'm going to make a little silver circle right here. And let's heat that up. Do you see it change? Watch this. Now it's thicker right here, so it's gonna be a little more dimensional. Keep it up. If you notice your, your paper is starting to walk a little bit, just lift it up a little bit. It won't wreck your paper. And just do it slowly and go down, and go up, and go down. And look at that beautiful shine. Okay, so that is pretty, very cool, don't you think so? And um, so what can you do? Once this is dry and set up, you put alcohol on it and nothing happens. It stays there. You can bring color over it, but it will not move that under color. That's, to me, that's the magic right there. And I'm just going to take that and let's say I don't want it. I can take it all off and buff my my silver up a little bit. So it won't change when you can go over it and do layers, which we love to do in mixed media and our abstractions. Now, I'm gonna also take some of this um, sterling and I'm gonna put a little circle of it right there. And now I'm gonna take the Tim Holtz air blower and just give it a little, spritz. 
Now, if I cook this, it's gonna be solid silva, so I don't want that. So I'm gonna put a couple of hits of alcohol in it to break it down a bit. Now you can break it down when it, before it cures. And it will mix a little bit with the color, which is interesting. You can use your brush to squish it a little bit and break it up a little bit more. And give it a, another hit and let's see what we get. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna put another, just a little bit of silver in the middle of it again. because so I want one little spot to be big and maybe I'll put it a little bit thick. I'm just gonna give it a little dot right there. I think that's an interesting uh, flow. Okay, I'm gonna let it sit a minute and, and dry. It doesn't take long to dry, it just takes a minute. And I'm just gonna let that sit. If I blow it, it'll sizzle a little bit and distort. And if you want it to stay a certain way, just leave it for a while. Let's go and take some more of that mine color. I'm gonna shake it again. Yeah, a lot of you know me, I love my copper, so I'm just gonna put little hits of it, little dots. And that's that. Let it dry. Now I'm gonna expedite things and let's get going. And I'm gonna stand at a, at a distance. Now, this is a well-loved heat gun, so don't, but it's Rangers and yours is a nice and shiny if you get one. They work great because they blow the heat and um, it isn't as hot as some of those other guns and it overdoes. This, to me, I like it a lot, it uh, works for me. Now, I want you to pay attention in here. Do you see the little textures I'm getting? And now the more you heat it, it's more it will smooth. So if you don't want it to get heated and smooth, take it off the fire. Okay, now look at these beautiful dots, how raised they are. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit so you can see. And it is beautiful. So this is a beautiful abstraction. And what I do is I like to take a frame and see how it's looking. And yeah, I like it. Let's try it the other side. Oh yeah, that's definitely really nice. I might like a little more dock in here. Maybe even a little more dock coming down. Maybe I'll even use met the uh, wax. Let's put a little more wax. Let's try another one. Let's use uh, a little gilded. It's golden looking. And I think I want to come in this direction this time and across. Well, I got a lot of going across. I'm just going to kind of like put that in there. Now I'm going to take alcohol on my brush and just pull it and make some smears. And I'm just zigzagging across. And now I'm putting it on top of the silver this time. And you'll see what happens. Let's put one little drop. I'm gonna steal some from right here and just put one little dot there. You see, you can even steal. I love that. This is very nebulosity looking. Little lines. You can put even more little dots just to break areas up to make them more interesting. Maybe a line on the side of this. I'm just stealing. And I, I like that. And that's a little light there, so I, I might come back and I'll show you how else uh, how else I manipulate things. So let's uh, just get the heat gun again. And I'm gonna work right in here first so you can see how those little dots will pop up on the sterling area we had before. And there they go. Look at that. Is that cool? And they're, So because it's opaque and metal on metal, unless you keep cooking it, it's gonna stay and keep that beautiful look. And now I'm gonna heat this area where we got it small, very little bit, and bring it across and watch, see the color come out. See the shine and it's more soft and delicate because it's not as thick. So sometimes you want thick, sometimes you want thin. So I'm just going back and forth and heating that area up. All right.
like I said, if you have texture and you want to keep it that way, don't heat it too long. Otherwise, you're going to lose all those great little swirls. Uh, if you look really closely, you'll see. Look at all of that. That's really beautiful. I like the texture changes I can get with this. And I love it how I can make these beautiful spheres. It's very beautiful. Now, an abstract, it could be anything. It could be this direction. You, you will decide. Sometimes I'll sign my name on an angle so I can tell. Let's see how that looks now. Oops, let's get that out of there. Okay, and oh, I'm really liking it. This is kind of dead center, so I need to break that up. So I think I will use a little more of that mine. Maybe I'll give it that feeling of um, of a sunrise or something. Well, actually, I'm gonna use gilded because I wanted to make it feel more like a sunrise. So shake, 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 and Maybe make an arch, just a drop, and I'll, I'll drag it now. I also like using the back of my uh, brushes. Don't be afraid to use all of the pots. It's all part of your brushes, and maybe give it a little swirl. And bring it over that line so it connects things. When things are connected, it really looks beautiful. Look at that. already looks great. I'm, I'm liking that. I'm going to steal some of these. Look at, you know, I'm just going to make some texture. Just by tapping on it as it dries, it'll get some texture. It will lose a little bit of it when I cook it, but not much. And I might even add some more of those little dots here and there. So I'm, I'm liking that nebula feel I'm getting. And you can keep playing in this as much as you want. Okay, let's heat that baby up. And here it goes. See that? And I got all those bumps. I don't want to lose them, so I'm getting off of it. Look at that. Look at how awesome that is. So as an artist, we're always trying to find new mediums that do really magical things. And I think this one really, uh, this one pops. I think uh, Tim oh, did an outstanding job. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Now, let's say I wanted this area a little darker in here. So what I want to do is I'll go to my, uh, might get some indigo because I want it dark. Because I, I want this silver area to pop a little more. So I'm going to just put this down. I'm just going to pour out of the bottle. Now watch what happens when I pour out of the bottle. It will actually stay away from the edge and I can tickle it and bring it down a little bit. Did you see how it doesn't go over unless I want it to? Okay, so let's say I want it to go over. I can just go right over this. And it'll still show through a bit because alcohol ink is transparent, but the uh, metal, metal is, is opaque. So, But you see how you can keep that line, your, your medium right next to it. And look at that. That's beautiful. I love it. I might like to dock and right in here. And so I'm going over the silver that's there. And look at that, that's really nice. I might break this up just with little dots. Just a little something. All right. Okay, now, so I, well, I flung that, but it doesn't matter because it's an abstract, it doesn't matter. But what I wanna do is soften some color back in. So I'm gonna wipe out my brush a little bit and just take out a little bit more. I don't wanna lose all of that. And then I might lift off a little bit. There. I like to vignette things a little bit where you dock in the corners and it brings you where you want, but I like a little bit of the light to show through. I, I'm a big scribbler. And I might like a line coming this way. There, that looks pretty nice. I try to do three quarters of a paper with with elements and, and kind of keeping some negative space, like about a, a quarter of it um, empty. And it really is a nice look. Let's take a look at that now. And don't be afraid to keep putting your mat on and see if you like it. Oh, I, I really like that. That looks really nice. And like I said, turn it, see what you, oh, I really like it in that direction. It looks like a ground in the sky and a moon. And I mean, you'll see things. That's what's magic about um, abstractions, but, now this way it almost looks like a city. 
Do you see how you have to look at your artwork? You have to really use your imagination and people will see the same things you see. They just can't figure out how you did it. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna let that one rest and it's done as far as I can see, but I do live with my art for a while and see how it goes. Let's do another one. Let's get another piece of Yuko. Now this time I'm gonna do something a little different. I wanna make flowers in it. So you're thinking, oh, how, you that's good for abstracts, but how do we do something like kind of fun like flowers? And what I do is, I'm gonna take some alcohol and just spritz it on the paper. Now I'm gonna take some gilded, and I'm gonna just make some uh, blowing flowers. I'm just gonna plop that down, two drops. I might even give it a spritz. And then I'm gonna take the Tim Holtz blower and give it a little blow. Now, if I want it to be a rose, I keep it in the center and then I blow out. But remember, if you keep it solid, it's gonna definitely not have, um, you won't see any changes. So let's say it sets up. Are you all done? No, you just add some more alcohol and you can break it back up. I kind of like this edge, so I'm just gonna put some alcohol in the middle and I'm gonna blow on it again. I would like part of that edge to come in. Now, can you use a brush? Absolutely, just take your brush and just add some alcohol. I'm gonna wipe that out a little bit. And just kind of pull it if you want, if you don't like blowing or if you like to use both. I like to use both because I'm looking for textures. And I wanna break this up because this is gonna be one solid piece of metal if I don't break it up a little bit. And some areas are gonna be solid and I like it that way. This one I would like to pull it. See how you can manipulate? What do you got? I don't know, we'll find out. I'm gonna just kinda of add some to the edge. Bull that brush a little bit. Working with the universe. Let's see what the world will give me. And here's a nice little rose. So even if I wanted to, I can also come in, wipe out my brush, get some more alcohol, and maybe make another set of petals just by breaking that up. You see how you can manipulate the wax? And just using alcohol. So I need some empty spots so that it won't be a solid piece, right? But I need also so you know that there's petals. So I'm just gonna alternate that little feeling. I'm wiping out and now I got a light area. And then I'll use that dirty brush up here. Now, I'm gonna see what I get, and then I will re rework it as much as I wish. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna start over here so you can watch the change. I like swirling it around so it just warms it up. Well, look, it's because it's thinner there, it's going to, it's changing first. Okay, so you can see it. You see how solid that got because it wasn't uh, broke up a lot. But you know, I wanted it solid there. So that looks really great. Are you stuck? Well, let's put it this way. Once it's dry, you can't move it, okay? Look, you don't move it unless there's wet spots still, but it doesn't matter. Now I'm gonna take another color. I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use mine this time. So this is gilded. And I wanna make it a little darker. I'm gonna put a little drop on the side because I'm gonna control it a little bit more. And I'm just gonna put little drops like around like that. And then take some alcohol and just kind of pop little drops around. I'm gonna wipe out my brush because it's kind of heavy still with ink. I mean, uh, with the wax. So I want it to be thin. I'm looking for a little color change, but I don't want it to be solid color. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna alternate, so it's gonna go this way. I'm gonna alternate again, so it goes this way. So now I'm going on top of that other color. It almost looks like a petal coming out this way, right? So maybe I'll enforce that a little bit more. And this could use a little edging. See how that's solid? I'm not I'm thrilled with it, so I'm gonna turn it into another petal, see? 
And I'm gonna wipe out the brush a bit. Now this will not move, remember, because it's already set up. So I'm gonna just decide where I'm gonna make it a little darker right in there. So it looks like the petals a little bit more dimension to it. Alrighty, that looks pretty nice. Now I'm gonna take my brush and just make little dots. And now I like some thickness to them, so I'm gonna go back and put little thick dots on top of the areas I want. Dots add a lot to a painting, but you want them to always be different. Some small, some large, such as that. I'm wiping out my brush a little bit, and I want to make this area a little darker. Wipe it out. Believe it or not, more of that wax comes is is there than you think, so you got to really help control that. You can always come back and add more of whatever on top, and maybe I'll add a little bit more of that here. just to give it a little bit more dimension. You can even, if you're daring, just add alcohol to your dirty brush and get more color. All right, let's heat it up and see what we get. One thing that's great is it doesn't take long. Now this area had a lot of alcohol on it, so it's kind of good to see how it will work. Sometimes it sizzles and makes textures, so it's just a matter of playing around with the wax. You can see how beautiful it is, and I've got some dimension in there. So now I, you wish, oh shoot, I wish I had some color in that, right? Okay, so let's do that. Now when I'm working with like the warm colors uh, opposed to the cool colors of the silver, I like to use my yellows. So I'm using uh, Tim Holtz uh, Sunshine Yellow at this point, and I'm gonna use that over what we already got. So I'm gonna put a drop of that on my, on my Ranger craft sheet. As you can see, it's well-loved. You should get one of these if you don't have one. It works great. And I just want it really thin. And I'm going right on top of everything. And now I got cola. And the metal shows through, look at this. Think of this as a card, if you want to do cards or anything, it's like it's like magic. And I'm just using alcohol and it's not gonna to touch anything underneath. Now let's say I didn't like something and I wanna get rid of it. I can always just lift off with alcohol and just highlight by just lifting off with my, uh, my napkin. But I still have a beautiful scent um, stain. So at this point, I'm gonna do some alcohol in the painting. So I'm just gonna put some alcohol down. And I'm using pistachio. I use whatever's on hand. I don't really uh, kill myself because I, I love all the colors. There's nothing wrong with any of them, but I wanna texturize things. I want things to be very textured and moving and on a slightly abstractness, because believe it or not, the world is more abstract than you think. Now remember what I said, look at, look how it goes up to the edge, but doesn't cross over the wax. It repels the wax, which is cool. Sometimes you want that and sometimes you don't. If you don't want it, you just go over it. That's all right, but I love it. And I'm just gonna hit it with some alcohol. So alcohol, ink, and wax, who knew? I swear that Tim is, uh, he's got some magic going on there. Okay. Now I'm gonna let that set up and maybe I'll do a silver one just to show you what I would do if it's silver. So I'm shaking my silver up and uh, maybe I want it over here. And of course that's just one big silver blob, right? So now I'm gonna wash out my brush, get a napkin get some of that green out. I don't mind if there's a stain of green in it or, or blue because those are the cool colors and it works really well with the sterling. So I'm just kind of like dancing it around and painting a, a rose this time rather than spraying with the air blower. And I'm just kind of dancing it around, kind of designing my flower to be looking in this direction this time. 
I'm going to lift off on some of that and bring it down into here. Remember, as long as you don't cook it, you can manipulate it. And if you go over, let's do that just so you'll see. If I take some of that silver and I go over the green, we'll see how that works out. Because it's thin, it will show through, but if it was a thick, and which I should do so you can see, if it's thick, it will cover it. You won't see any of it. So let's do it both ways. I'll put a drop here. So now I can control it a little better because I'm gonna put it thick here. I'm gonna use a little alcohol in my brush. Put it thicker here. Maybe a thicker petal there, coming in. Petal there, petal there. Do you see how I can control it a little bit? Now I'm gonna use alcohol, wipe out my brush and just soften some of that so I get textures. I know that this is gonna turn into one big blob so I'm gonna to have to make this darker in here, but we're gonna go over it with ink. So this one's facing a little more to the left rather than to the right. I'm always looking to be different. I want that a little heavier. I would like the, an edge on there. So this is a great way to get your edges if you want a hot edge. This is a great way to do it. So we'll tickle that in. In there. I want it alternating. Flowers don't come out all next to each other. They're always alternating. A little there and a little there. Okay. Now I'm going to wipe out my brush. Now I just want to make sure that I'm light in some spots, so I'm going to come back and pull off. So I wanted to show you, you can pull off. You're not stuck. Oh, I went too far. It doesn't matter. You just lift off. Okay. I like that big blob of silver there. And if your silver dries out on your palette, all you do is give it a little bit of alcohol and it comes back. All right, that looks pretty nice. And like I said, I can come back and do many layers. It's up to me. But this is the point where you want to lift off because uh, once it's there, it's there. Okay. Just break that line up. Okay, I like that. So now I'm going to heat it. And there it goes. Look at that. It's like it's so fun to watch, isn't it? Look at the textures come out in the middle. That's done. So now let's take a look at this beautiful card. This is beautiful. And now I want to do is enhance the silver. So how do you do that? Okay, I'm going to use some blue this time. So I'm going to use some uh, amethyst. It's a nice color. Have you ever met a color you didn't like? <laughs> and I also like this uh, aquamarine, so maybe I'll use some of that as well. Just put it down. I like things to be handy, and then I just do what I want when I'm, when I'm there. So what I want is very little. So I'm going to bring alcohol down here and just a little bit of that amethyst and maybe a little bit of that aqua together. It's dark, so I need to thin it out because I want it very thin. And now what I want to do is start in the darkest area, which would be the center of the flower. And you see how I'm starting to get value change. I think I want this area light, but this area a little darker, so I'm going to go over some of the light areas. Just pop them in there. But it's very light, so I'm not going crazy. But it's a, it, because it's silver, it's a cool color. Compared to the warmth of the other colors, it really works nicely. So, But you do have to take your time. I'm going to darken this now a little bit more with alcohol ink. And I'm using uh, some of that amethyst. And just see how that really gives dimension. But if you put it up to the light, you will see through it. Which is pretty dang cool. And I really love it. I'm going to bring that in. Kind of shake.
shape in these shapes. I'm kind of going underneath the shape of the silver to enhance the silver look. Now I'm going to go back and just tap on that silver center for texture. So yes, you can paint with this as well. Now I'm going to just wipe my brush out with very little ink on it and just give a tint. I'm not looking to put a lot of color down. I just want it not to be as white as that. So you know, you see it, it's not as white, but yet it's perfect for me. Everybody's got to do their own deal. Okay, so now let's do one uh, little flower bud. Oh, I color. Let's do, uh, let's do whatever I haven't used. I haven't used statue. Let's do statue for a bud. I'll put the bud, I'll put the color down here on the side. Get another brush so we don't spend all day cleaning. And I'm just going to, a little flower bud. And they're round at the bottom, just so you know, if you ever want to make one of these flowers, it's round at the bottom, a point at the top. That's it. For this, for this particular flower I'm doing. And maybe one coming out at us a little bit. Let's see. Kind of like a little point. But it's a little rounder because it's coming out at us. All right. So now I need to lift off and add. So now I'm going to come in here and lift off in the center where I want it to bulge out. And on this one, I'm going to wipe out my brush again and just pull it into the center and back and forth so I get a value change. I'm looking for a dark, a medium, and a light. Wipe out your brush. And then in here, the highlight will be right here. Just know where your values go. You know, there's a little ball here, so it's lightest right there. And then it's a little softer. Just tap, tap, tap. That's a good blend. You don't have to overwork it. Nobody's going to know the difference. Believe me. They're just going to say, oh, isn't that a pretty? And I'll just put a little highlight there. All right. Just for so I can see some dimension. And then I'll pull a line. Okay, now that this has had a chance to set up, I can just soften some of these edges if I want. Or if you want more edges, you can just put alcohol on there. So let's uh, get some green again. And I'm just going to make some stems. I don't want it too juicy, so I dry it out by just rubbing it on the side and letting it dry out and just pull stems. See, that's all you have to do. And you can put little stemlets over here. There you go. stem and who knows it's jagger and the more jaggery you are the more cool it looks so don't kill yourself don't lose all the cool that you do <laughs> we you know we we really work too hard okay I'm just gonna pull little points out just to show you those are the little growths on there all right that's good enough we're not getting crazy okay so now what I would like to do is go back and just darken so when I'm doing things like this I know that I want to darken behind these flowers because I want them to really pop so I need to darken there and I might even add a little of the blue to my green mix and cool it off a little bit look at it look at that see how I can shape it around it we haven't cooked it yet if I wanted to, I can still manipulate it. It's up to me as the artist. What do I want to do? But you're allowed to do whatever you want. I give you permission. And we'll just throw some ink down because that's how I make my leaves. You can do that, right? You can throw some ink down. Let's make this area a lot darker because we want that silver to pop out. So I'm going to put a little bit more of the green with the blues, and I'm mixing them all up. I don't have any particular thing going on. Look how pretty that is already. 
And so this is easy for alcohol ink because the alcohol is doing all the work. You're just kind of showing it where you want color or value change. Like I want this really dark here. I might even want some more flowers coming this way. So maybe I'll put another bud coming out. I can do anything just like you. Look at, oh, that turned into a leaf. So do I go with it? Absolutely. I love painting with the universe. It gives me things, tells me what to do. There, that came. And see, I went over the flower that's set up and you can see the silver through it and it makes an accent right on that leaf. I mean, that is just beautiful. I'm just gonna tap around. Now, the more alcohol you have on your brush, you're gonna get it blended. So if you don't want it so blended, just get a little thicker. Don't put so much alcohol in it. Oh, I like that. It's dark and right in here. You don't want the whole thing. You want to pick and choose where you want it dark. And you want it dark where there's a light. So if, in other words, if your flower is light, you want to dark around it. If it do your flower is dark, you want lighter around it. You also want variations around it. I'm just going to darken back here a little bit to give it a little vignette. I like vignettes, it kind of pulls you into where you want to look. And that means dark in the corners or your edges. All right, that looks good. And now I'm gonna come back and dock in some of these little areas here with that dirty brush. I like it. Kind of shows you where some of the areas are that it's turning, but I don't have to show everybody everything. It's just enough, just enough to get them knowing what's going on. Sometimes it's good if you're learning to loosen up, it's good to just leave it like you think it looks good, but you're not sure. Get away from it and then come back and you'll decide what you want to do. I'm going to get some more of the um, amethyst out. I love that color. Actually, I might just put it right up here. Because I can always manipulate it. Now this is Yupo, so once you've got some dark color on there and greens and blues and such, you own it. But I know that I want this area dark. And I'm just gonna tickle it down. I'm putting a little alcohol in my brush and just pulling it across. You see how little dabs turn into leaves? Just add little drops of alcohol in it it'll mix with the color that's already there and you get beautiful textures. So see how little, I, what am I doing? I'm just smashing. You can smash, right? Come on, you know you can smash. Anybody can smash. Your kids can smash. All right, so there you go. Let's cut a little of that color there. Do you see how I'm looking up in this area now? That's really, really desirable for me for this picture. So I'm gonna get a little more of the alcohol. I'm gonna use a little more of that pistachio. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that right in here. And now I'm gonna bring some of that up in there. And it will break and look like more leaves. And all I'm doing is dabbing. If you can dab, you're gonna be the most best artist that ever was, for sure. Well, anyway, it would be pretty good. Right, I like that. Do you see how just breaking that up just a little bit makes such a difference, right? Now we're gonna come down here and this is kind of coming this way and then around. So I think I want a little darker green right in here. I'm just gonna take a big blob of that green and pull it in and make leaves out of it. I'm not gonna get too crazy. I just wanna show you how um, to manipulate your inks and this wax because I think that this is the next big deal to be honest with you. I uh, I love how that it texturizes and everything and you, like I said you can keep going over it and over it and doing your thing. It's very beautiful. Now I'm getting a little bit more of the green. I want to get it a little darker down here. I'm going to get into that blue with it and get that dark underneath this petal because I want that petal to pop a little bit more. See how if something's light, go darker. Then that makes it pop out. So in other words, if you're trying to get something to pop and it isn't doing it, say to yourself, is that dark or is it light that you're trying to do the opposite to? Okay, that looks good. 
and you always can do more layers. I'm a big layer person. I'm always working on layers. So don't be afraid to make more layers. Not dark enough, go back. Don't mind also halos around things. See how there's a little lightness? I, I kind of like that. So if you don't like it, take it out. Everybody's got to do their thing. This is the way we don't have one painting on the wall, every single wall. <laughs> and now I'm just scribbling. Now I'll just uh, take some more of this, whatever it is I got left over, and I'm just going to pop it down. You see how you see that with just little dots of light in between? Don't lose all those lights. It sparkles the area up a little bit if that's what you're looking for. I'm going to get us more of the green. And I'm going to just pop some more greens down here into the blues. What if I wanted a flower up here? I can do that. I can do anything. Don't be afraid to do what you want to do. I think mostly we're afraid sometimes. We know what we want to do, but we're afraid they're going to mess it up because it looks so good. Yeah, that's not how you're going to learn. You got to kind of mess it up and then you learn to fix it and then you become magic. Magic, magic. coming back into the blue and stealing. Do you see how I do that? <laughs> That's why I say, don't worry about what the color is as long as you're doing what you want. Okay, now let, let's say, I, I this looks a little like there's one leaf and then there's nothing. So I think I'd like a leaf here. So what I'm gonna do is just take some alcohol and just pull a leaf up into this direction. Because this brings my vision back up. I'm gonna blot and voila, instant leaf. Now I can just tickle at it scribble and enhance it as much as I wish. It looks like it's coming out. The universe said, hey, it's coming out to you. So let's make it lighter. Maybe I should put a little silver on that. See, this is how I think. I never know what I'm gonna do. I'll bring that back, get some of that dock in here to make that turn show up. Wipe out my brush so there's not too much alcohol so I can get that turn. And then I'm going back again with some more of the amethyst. So I need to reinforce some docks. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to reinforce the dock of this petal by just darkening behind it. And it's got a little bit of a dock in here, right? And now I need to put a little dock there. And that's how you, because this is light, I need dark behind it, right? And the stem is light, so I need a dark behind it or next to it. All right, that looks good. A little darker here, a little darker there. It's bringing you where I want you to see. I do, like I said, I do many layers, and I, but I could bore you forever doing all the layers I do, but. You need to see it so you understand what I do. And once you see it, you'll get it. And you'll say, oh, okay, I get that. Now I need to just darken because I'm not getting light enough. That's right. That's all you need to do. And I'm just going to kind of tap around here and darken that at corner and darken this corner a little bit. Then I, this petal is coming over this flower, so that's fine. That looks good. I'm going to wipe out my brush. I think I want a little more blue right in here. And in here. See, every time I hit it, it gets dot, the lighter. The flower looks lighter. So that's how I decide. Always come and reshaping again. So I'm not going to keep boring you on that, but that's what I do. I just keep coming back and reshaping, get things a little more dark, get things lit. And then 
I'll take that dirty brush. I'm just gonna wipe it out over here because I like the darker on that side. And just take that and just kind of dance it in this silver again. So it's a little darker towards the in-between areas of the petal. All right, that looks good. You can also, just to take it a net step further so you can see, I'm gonna spritz. And it makes beautiful foliage. See that? It does nothing to the silver, I mean the um, wax, but it does to this wax because I didn't cure it yet. So we'll just cure it now before I get it too wet. So I'm just gonna cook it. And there it goes. Oh, that's the magic right there. Look at that. And I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm gonna take my uh, frame again and see how this looks. Oh my, really, really nice. I might take, I need to do a bumblebee, right? You know me, right? So I'm gonna take some of that gilded. I'm gonna put a little bit on the side. Wipe out my brush really good. I'm gonna take that gilded, and I think I'd like a little bee coming down this way, but I want it thick. Make sure you can see this. So I'm just making a pill shape. And I could even do it right out of the bottle, to be honest with you, but I'm just trying to control it. So I'm gonna put out a little bit more because I want it thick. Then I want another bee here. To be or not to be. Now the trick is with, with things such as bees is you want three. It just seems to work. And you want them to bring you where you want to go. So this one's coming in. This one's coming in. And we can give them a friend. And threes are very desirable to our psyche. And I'm gonna make this one thicker again. And just keep this one tiny. You want different sizes. And you can make as many as you want. Let's say if I wanted to make actually this gilded on the edge here. Put that in there. Maybe a little bit on this tip. Maybe a little on this edge. Okay, let's do it. Let's do the edge first, see how it does. I know it's gonna look marvelous. And there it goes. It reinforces that piece being in front. There's my bees, here they come. And one more V over here. There he goes. And that tip. Look how beautiful that is. Now you can bring your brush and make the rest of the V. I actually want to use silver. Shake the silver. Put that right. Drop on the side. I'm gonna get a thinner brush. Dip it in the, and I want them to have just the feeling of a little wings. They're V's. It's like a little V, a little tiny V that way. And this one just a little bit. Now when you do this, they look like they're flying because they're not like stuck on there. They're not really super duper um, edgy. See how they look, they're adorable. And now I just wanna enhance the bees so they look a little more bee. <laughs> so I might use my literate pen and just kinda go around 
the head and outline the shape a little bit. And right around there, give them a little belly band. People will know what it is. You don't have to go crazy and doing everything. Okay, now this one, he's a little bigger. He's coming over here. His head, belly band, tail, and under the belly is a little shadow. His little wing has a shadow. I don't have to show everything. I just need to show enough. <laughs> and this one is just a little head. And he's kind of like straight out looking down at him. You know, always keep him a little different. You can outline the wing just a little bit. And then come back, reinforce anything you want. Whatever you like. I don't like too much information on the little ones. I can almost draw it with my letter at pen and I'd be done. So that looks really, really cute. Don't you think so? I do. Anyway, and you can also soften your lines with a little alcohol. Because I don't like anything too sharp. And I just soften it by just tapping on it a little bit. And just give it a tap. There's hardly any alcohol on this brush, but it's enough to soften hot edges. It's not about the bees, it's about the flowers. Okay, so anyway, I think that came out pretty good. Let's put a cover on this and see how it looks with a frame. Oh my God, that's a sweet little thing. I love it. I could work on it a little more, more dimension and everything, but actually pretty nice, don't you think so? I don't know what I got right here, but I'm just gonna... Little shadow. There you go. Anyway, let's look at a couple others I've done. So here's one I did another abstraction. Let me show you that framed up. Look how beautiful that is. But you see that that's stunning. I love that. And it's very look at the shine. It is really desirable. And like I said, this is uh uh, Ranger's Yupo paper works wonderful. Here's another one. I really put some time in this one. So I know you don't have three hours to wait, but here we go. Look how beautiful this one is. This one is stunning because I put the layers in it. I kept layering more color on top and then coming back with more of the, the waxes. I came back and reloaded those dots on the top and over and over again, my little bees. And I'm going to bring it up so you can see it a little better. So beautiful. I, what I would do is glue the back of this and mat it right on the, put this right on a backboard. But once it's on there, boy, I'm telling you, beautiful. This is a, a, a really, a new, it's like a new paint for artists. Um, yeah, you can use it for so many ways. So I would really encourage you to go to see Tim's, um, tutorial on how to use it with different, you know, different ways. Look at this one. Is that adorable or what? This is, people love abstractions, but remember, you need a strong center of interest. You need to bring them somewhere and bring them around or make a triangle, you know, work for, make U shapes, make L shapes. You can turn it upside down and it looks totally different. Looks like a tower now. Who knows? Just, that's what's wonderful about abstractions. It teaches you to actually see. Now this one here is a painting I did in alcohol ink and all I did was go back on top and spatter. And it, I call this, because we were painting April showers, bring May flowers and here's our showers. And all I did was spatter. I took some of the uh, wax, bang, 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 done. And a beautiful effect, but yet it's subtle. It doesn't hit you in the face. See how beautiful that is? Look at that. Very subtle. So lots of new magical tools to be used. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and little class. And uh, come back and see me again for our next class. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye.